All right. Well, Sam, you did a great job yesterday helping a novice hockey mind like myself cope with that brutal loss the Wild took versus the Blues Monday. And now they have a chance to respond and rebound in a big way tonight. As we discussed yesterday, we were both disappointed not to see Talbot behind the net in Game 1. It feels like a virtual lock if he gets the nod in Game 2 after watching Fleury give up four goals, right? I mean, is there any chance Talbot's not your starting goaltender tonight in what now feels like a must-win game for the Wild? I think there's a chance he's not. Um, okay. I would I would go Talbot, I, and I laid mm-hmm. that out on the show, that I just think it would be a good shake up to just change the vibe, change the mojo, get another good goaltender in there um, with sort of a fresh mindset. But I get if you want to ride Mark andre Fleury, it, you believe in him, you believe that he'll bounce back, you believe that the players in front of him will play a little better and give him some more support, um, and you don't want to be too wishy-washy in your decision-making if you want to like stay really convicted – I understand why they might stick with Flurry. So I would not call it a lock, but I think I think it's 50-50 at this point. I think that it's a coin flip on who starts. Um, I certainly would think if four or more goals get scored on Flurry this time and they lose and they're going to St. Louis, then I think you pull the plug and you and you go to Talbot. Um, but I think that we might see Flurry one more time. I, I don't know Luke, which is the most honest answer I can give, but I, I think it's up in the air, honestly. I go off of like, you know, baseball starting pitchers. Like we know well in advance. Is this the norm? Is this because it's playoff time? Like at what point do you expect to actually find out? When is it announced when we're going to hear who is behind net tonight? Yeah, the Wild play this very close to the vest before game one. Mm-hmm. Um, and they refused to officially confirm. I think they gave hints that it was going to be mm-hmm. flurry. And, you know, oftentimes at morning skate, um, which is happening, okay. I think, as we speak, mm-hmm. they there's there's some indication with, you know, which goalie is taking. Like, think about a football practice, Luke, the first team reps. Um, they yes, sort of have a hierarchy for, for how the goalies take their their reps. Mm-hmm. Um, and even if the team doesn't officially tell us what happens at morning skate might indicate who's going to start. And I think that news would drop probably in a couple hours from the time we're recording this. Um, and when people watch this, they might know, they might not for sure. But um, I I think the team wants to keep the Blues on their toes because there is a different strategy for how you might approach Talbot versus Fleury. Uh, they have their strengths and weaknesses, and there's certain ways you'd want to shoot the puck at, at each respective goaltender. But the Wild would like to create as much uncertainty as possible. I want to get into that little X's and O's, if you will, later on. But first, Sam, I know come playoff time, everyone is banged up. It's just part of the process, right? Grinding through a long regular season, almost unheard of not to have at least a few dings at this point. And you're just forced to make the proper adjustments. You you hope your depth can hold strong. But are injuries quietly playing a bigger factor in this team's performance than maybe most fans are realizing right now? I mean, if the Wild lose this series, will that be something you look back and say, if only they were a little more healthy, that could have made a huge difference? Yeah, hockey's one of those sports where a lot of times after the season, you find out some guy was playing with a torn labrum or a sprained MCL. Um, And hockey is probably one of the most secretive sports about injuries as well. All they do is upper body, lower body, right? They don't really give you a body part. You don't really know what's going on because it's such a physical game. You don't want to expose your players to, to punishment if teams are targeting their shoulder or their knee or what have you. Um, I know Jared Spurgeon had to come back from an injury late in the season. Don't know about his health. Marcus Felino had an apparent knee injury in the season finale, and he played in that game on, on Monday night. No way he's 100%. I mean, he's gutting through something. That's a key defenseman. That's a key forward. You know, Jordan Greenway was was banged up toward the end of the year, too. Mm. And in, in the sport of hockey, 82 games, that type of physicality, a lot of guys are playing banged up. So there's probably stuff we don't know about as well. But I do know that with Felino and Spurgeon, those are two of your team leaders. If they're not at 100%, um, you know, you could definitely see that affecting this group. And Spurgeon, too, seemed frustrated on Monday, out of sorts. He fortunately avoided a suspension when he hacked a guy in the legs with his stick. Uh, I think he's going to have to pay a fine for that. But we'll see what happens tonight. I mean, I think the key, Luke, is is honestly get a goal on the board early and mm-hmm. just get that shutout out of your mind, right? You mentioned pending who's in net for the Wild may 
you know, influence or impact the Blues game plan. Huge football nerd here, as you know. Love the X's and O's part of the game. Creating the game plan leading into the week. Uh, the the in-game halftime adjustments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In hockey, how much of the X's and O's play a factor? Like, how much film grinding is there? And is there any actual adjustments you expect the Wild to make tonight? Or, or think they need to make tonight? Or in hockey, is it just put your best players out on the ice and let them rip yeah I, I think it's a fairly simplistic breakdown of monday's game mm-hmm. their power play was great our power play was crap mm-hmm. that's what dean evison's gonna say in in the film and there's probably more nuance than that and and luke i've had you know i i announced saint thomas hockey games and i've had the privilege of sitting in and some college hockey film sessions you wouldn't believe the detail that these coaches mm. can go into with their players, teaching technique, body positioning, um, you know, how to go after a puck, how to absorb a check, how to distribute a check. Like there's so much more to hockey. Um, if you're like us, you don't play the game. Uh, you might not realize, but I think that when you get down to it, Monday's game came down to the power play Wednesday's game. Tonight's game could easily come down to the power play. And I'm going to say something radical, Luke. I mean, stop the presses. This is a hot take. Here we go. I would almost prefer if the wild don't have a power play for a while in Mm. this game, Mm. I would prefer them five on five. And here's why. Number one, their, their analytics are extremely strong five on five. That's one of their strengths is when they are, you know, man to man against the other team they seem to have this, this extra something. I don't want them to have an early power play. The way the power play is going, they could easily fail on that power play and get in the fan's head, in the team's head, create tension early in the game. I would rather see them skate a full period five on five and just see what happens because that's where this team really can shine. I don't want them to go 0 for 2 in the first seven minutes of the game on the power play and then suddenly you're feeling that deja vu all over again. I'd like to see something a little different. We all know the Blues have turned into the Wilds kryptonite playing four games this season. They lose all four. You mentioned an even better stat yesterday, noting it's even actually worse than that. Last 14 games, Blues are 12-1-1 one, and one versus the Wild. You come out, you get throttled on home ice in game one. Just how critical is this game tonight for a variety of reasons? I mean, are we in must-win territory already? I'm not going to say must, Mm -hmm. and here's why. Home ice in the hockey playoffs probably means less than any other sport. Mm. Uh, Hockey's the most random game. You get team like eight seeds, seven seeds going on runs way more often than you would in, in, in basketball, for instance. And you see upsets much more often in hockey. And that happens because home ice is just a little less sacred in hockey playoffs. Hard to explain why that is. Um, but home ice doesn't seem to have as much impact in the postseason, which is odd because in the regular season, it seems to have a great amount of impact. The wild home record was unbelievable this year. Um, so was the blues home record for whatever reason, you kind of throw that out in the playoffs. So if you go down Oh two, you're in deep trouble, Luke, don't get me wrong. Then you got to win four out of five, but I don't think you, I mean, if the Blues can come here and win too, the Wild certainly can go to St. Louis and win as well. I don't think that's impossible, but still winning four out of five, if you think of what you would need to do in that situation, requiring you probably to win two in St. Louis's place. Yeah, you'd have to win two there. That is a tough task. And just beating a team four out of five of that caliber is difficult. So um, I'm not saying must win, but you'd like to win. You hope to win. Uh, And if you don't, you're probably gripping the sticks pretty tightly in game three. Wild look to leave Minnesota with a split tonight with the Blues before heading back to St. Louis to face off in game three Friday. Puck drop tonight, not until 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on ESPN. Sam better sneak in a little catnap. Going to be a long night for Wild fans. (laughs)